the meeting started. Okay, before I open the meeting and read all of the statements, I would like to recognize our me member that just resigned recently, um, Eddie Collins. Eddie served like 15 years on this board and he contributed greatly. We are gonna miss him and I know he resigned because of health reasons. So we wish him the best, uh, whatever he is enduring and hopefully things will work out for Eddie. And did you know he just recently got married? Oh, gee. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> congratulations to Eddie on his marriage. Anyway, so. Oh, okay. Well, she doesn't, she doesn't affect our quorum. So I will go ahead and start the meeting. Uh, before we um, hear the first case, I have a, an introductory to read. This is a public hearing, and we are the Zoning Board of Adjustments for Putnam County, Florida. We operate under the authority of Articles 11 and 12 of the Land Development Code as amended. The primary responsibility of the board is to hear and decide appeals challenging final determinations made by the Planning and Development Services Department under the Land Development Code and to hear and act upon request for variances, special use permits, non-conforming use determinations and preliminary development plans under the land development code. Today, we only have a variance, so I will skip the section on the special use permit. A variance is relaxation of the requirements of the zoning code in a particular case where because of unusual circumstances, a little enforcement of our zoning code would result in undue and unnecessary hardship. The zoning code permits us to authorize variances only for height, size of structure, size of yards, and open spaces. If we grant a variance, we may impose reasonable conditions on the use of the property, which must be satisfied if the variance is to remain valid. The standards we use in deciding whether or not to grant a variance are listed in sections 9.04.03 of the Land Development Code. Procedurally, we will call each case by name and number. A member of the staff will then briefly explain to us the nature of each request. We will then take any comments from the applicant or their representative followed by any public comments concerning the request. Please direct all comments or statements to the board. Since we're on a Zoom meeting, uh, it's sort of, we're not in an audience, so it's sort of a little bit looser. Before speaking, we ask each person to be recognized and identify his or herself by name and, num and address. After all persons wishing to speak have been heard, we will entertain a motion from the board this motion will be voted on by the board members and become our final order. Any decision made by this board can be appealed to the circuit court. However, any appeal must be filed within 30 days after the board of adjustment has rendered the final order which is being appealed. Okay, are there any questions before we get started? If not, the first case to be considered is variance 20-003. Uh, Jim was, okay. Madam Chair, uh, Jim Troiano representing Putnam County. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Very good. Madam Chair, I would like to present to you variance 2020-003. I'd also like to share my screen at this time so everyone can see a PowerPoint presentation that I have. Is that acceptable? Yes. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, but very good. Now. I'm sorry? I can now. Very good. So I'd like to begin with uh, this presentation. Um, an overview, the applicant is Lillian Weeks. Uh, we did receive an application from her. Uh, the location uh, in question is 821 Lakeshore Terrace. This is diagonally across the street or northwest from 820 Lakeshore Terrace in Interlochen. The current zoning of this uh, location is R1A residential and it has a future land use on our map of rural residential. And the request is a variance to section 2.04.04B of our land development code to place an accessory structure, or in this particular case, a garage on a lot or parcel separated by a public or private street from the principal use or structure. Madam Chair, that's the request. I'd like to present you this aerial 
As you can see in, in dark red with the number 820, that is the primary use structure or, or property. And directly across the street in a lighter blue with the number 821 in red is the location of where this proposed garage um, will be located. And these properties are owned uh, by the applicant. From a current zoning perspective, you'll see here in the middle, uh, if you can see my cursor, this is the, um, the new location. Um, and so it is zoned um, R1A, as I mentioned earlier. And as you can see, everything else is consistent with zoning around this property. Uh, from a future land use, as I mentioned, it's rural residential. Again, here's the parcel in question, and the, it is similar with a use uh, surrounding it. Uh, there are no wetlands or floodplain uh, issues associated. As you can see, um, it is uh, in FEMA flood zone X, a non-flood hazard zone. This is a site plan that's been provided by the applicant for the garage to be located on uh, that property located at 821. As you can see, there is a, a garage does meet uh, from a setback standpoint. It's a 42 by 40 uh, garage that will be placed on that, pro on that property. So a little background information, the applicant um, owns both lots, uh, lot 125 and then lot 35, uh, both in that subdivision. The parcel with the principal use, again, located at 820 Lakeshore Terrace, was platted at approximately 72 feet wide and approximately 271 feet long. And the parcel is plus or minus uh, 0.45 acres. The applicant states clearly her hardship is due to the size of her lot, as I just mentioned, the placement of the current structure that would be on the lot if, if uh, allowed, which it doesn't appear that it can, as well as a large, a large oak tree being near uh, the principal use structure. So she's citing those are issues that the garage can't be located on her parcel. Uh, the vacant parcel uh, across the street is approximately 0.31 acres in size, plus or minus. Both of the parcels are located in the Grandin Lake Shore Unit 1 subdivision. It was recorded in 1960 with the present lot sizes and configuration. The primary residence was legally permitted and construction constructed in 1968. Uh, according to our land development code, an owner, a uh, 2.0404B, an owner can place an accessory structure on a lot or parcel separated by the public, by a public or private street from the principal use or structure. However, the property owner must obtain a variance from the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and that's why she's here today. So we have six criteria, Madam Chair, that we have to look at. Um, our analysis of all six shows that she does qualify. Um, staff recommendation would show that. I'll identify the first, uh, special conditions and circumstances do exist, which are particular, uh, peculiar, should I say, to the land structure and building involved or the proposed development design utilizes innovative planning and design, which will result in a better development and will be asset to the community. In our analysis, again, we know that this parcel uh, location is immediately across the street from her primary use structure. Um, again, getting back into the platting, uh, into the size, 72 feet wide and approximately 271 feet deep. Um, and again, with the oak tree and the size and current configuration of the lot, it makes it uh, impossible for her to meet the required setbacks in the R1 zoning district. And so uh, staff does find the applicant meets the criteria, again, based on the need to uh, request a variance from the Zoning Board of Adjustment, uh, not only in our Land Development Code Chapter 2.04, but also the requirements of Land Development Code 9.04. Um, so we do show that she meets, uh, the, the applicant, should I say, meets variance criteria one. Variance criteria two, um, the special conditions and circumstances described in paragraph A above uh, do not result from a failure on the applicant's part to follow applicable county, state, or federal land use regulations, as well as building codes. Our analysis clearly shows that there are um, the special conditions identified above are not the result of her failure of the applicant to follow our um, rules and regulations or as well as state and federal uh, use regulations. 
Uh, again, this is a subdivision recorded in 1960 with present lot sizes and configurations. Uh, staff does find the applicant meets criteria two. Variance criteria three, granting the variance request will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is I'm sorry, denied by this code to other lands, buildings, or structures in the same zoning district. Our staff analysis shows that the applicant, um, the applicant, should I say, is requesting a variance, um, again, due to Land Development Code 2.0404B. Again, gets back to the specific language of the code that they are afforded the ability to request this variance. A homeowner in a similar circumstance could request the same variance. The Zoning Board of Adjustment has approved a variance for the placement of an accessory uh, use structure in similar situations in the county. And based on that, we recommend that um, to you that she does meet criteria three. In variance criteria four, literal interpretation of the provisions of this ordinance would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same zoning district under the terms of this code and would place unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. And our staff analysis, due to the enabling language and intent of the land development code that we've been mentioning, 2.04B, coupled with similar prior approvals by the Zoning Board of Adjustment, the applicant is afforded the ability to request this variance. The size and configuration of the platted lot, along with the existing legally permitted resident structure and oak tree that she's described next to the structure, makes the placement of an accessory structure on the principal use parcel difficult when looking at setbacks. Homeowners in similar circumstances have requested and could request the same variance. And Madam Chair, uh, staff does find the applicant meets criteria four. Moving on to criteria five and six, these will be the last two. In five, it states granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of this ordinance and such variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare interest. Our analysis identified that granting this variance will be in harmony with the general intent of the land development code that's been described and outlined in this um, PowerPoint presentation. The purpose of this ordinance is to allow the property owners the ability to place accessory structures on a parcel across from public and private streets when circumstances prevent them from locating an accessory structure on the principal use lot. The placement of the garage on the subject lot will not be injurious to the area or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare or interest. We do find that she meets the applicant, should I say meets criteria five. And finally, the variance is granted in number six is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building or structure. On our staff analysis, identifies that granting this variance will be within the minimum confines of our land development code 20404B. And we find that the applicant does meet criteria six. Madam Chair, in conclusion, staff does find the applicant's requested variance meets the six criteria I just talked or discussed of our land development code. And we do recommend approval for an accessory structure, in this particular case, a garage, subject to the applicant obtaining all required permits prior to the construction of any of the, uh, I'm sorry, of the accessory use. And I would then open it up for any questions that anybody may have. Does anyone have any questions for staff? Yes, I have one question. When I was out there, it looked like some preliminary work had already started. Is this a codes case or? What? No, sir. Um, I, I don't know of any, I did see the same, some site work that was done. I, I didn't see any footers that were poured, any driveway work that was done. No, so it looked like that. some site work done. So it's not a coach case? No, sir, it's not. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions for staff? Okay, uh, before we proceed with uh, hearing from the applicant, I would like to do a site visit roll call, please. Earl Ballinger? Yes. Mark Fisher? Yes. Mary's absent. Les is absent. Joe Theobald? Yes. Ron West? Yes. 
And Chair Linda, uh, yes. Okay, um, Mrs. Weeks, would you like to address the board and add anything that you think is pertinent other than what the staff had to say? Um, well, they actually, he actually pretty much covered everything. Um, my home, this home that I moved to, um, I, I cannot even have a really large low mower going on the only available side, which would be the side behind me. Uh, there is a big oak tree next to it. Uh, on the other side is paved. Um, and again, it's very narrow. Uh, I would have to literally clear every single tree from my lot and still it would block the view from my neighbors. Um, I am on the lake side. So that's why I requested the variance um, to put a garage which is literally across the street um, because this way um, we can actually um, nicely, in a nice way, just keep um, our boats and um, the trailer we have, like just, you know, like a working trailer that we use to get the material sometimes. Uh, and uh, my fiance has a really huge truck, which when he comes back home, he works um, on the road. Um, he parks on the outside. And just recently, um, I'd say a little bit over a month ago, um, a truck got broken. So um, somebody uh, took our guns and loaded magazines and stuff. And um, we just want to protect our, our things and uh, make sure everything's organized. So nothing is really laying around in front of our house. We um, currently keep um, our camper and uh, some of our other things uh, in storage. Uh, we actually have been paying for that for a while. Um, so now that we actually are able to build um, garage, uh, we just would like to have our things close by. So it's not uh, elsewhere uh, parked and, uh, you know, so that's pretty much it. All right, does anyone have any questions for Mrs. Weeks? Ms. Weeks? Okay, if not, uh, we have a speaker card today, Mrs. Janet Lockhart, would you like to, I think you've, have it checked in favor. Would you like to speak in favor of this application? Ms. Lockhart, would, okay, you need to unmute your system and you need to give us your name and 911 address for the record. Thank you. Um, my name's Janet Lockhart. My 911 address is 207 Oak Drive, Interlochen, Florida, 32148. Okay, would you like to make your comments about this application? Uh, yes. Uh, my position is the, the president of the Grand and Lake Shores Homeowners Association. And um, I, we did have a special board meeting on Monday evening to review the plans of Ms. Weeks, uh, for Ms. Weeks' request for her uh, garage to be built. And I just want for the record to um, read the governing documents that apply in this situation. Um, it says the property owner may maintain a home business provided the property owner association member handles all matters relating to such home business only by phone or correspondence. Um, we just want to state for the record that Ms. Weeks has had a um, just a few things as, at home as far as a business, but has not had any uh, traffic back and forth. So that does qualify. That's uh, number one under book 48, page 666 of our governing documents. Uh, number two, no accessory or temporary building shall be used or occupied as living quarters. And she also meets that requirement. The third requirement is all buildings to be re erected or placed upon said premises shall be subject to prior approval of the grantor or its assigns, specifically the board of directors. And we did have a special meeting um, on Monday evening and the board uh, did approve her plans. And so that um, the only other thing is the there were some objections by neighbors but Ms. Weeks and those neighbors were were able to uh, negotiate an agreement that as long as she had a privacy fence, 
to protect their site view, they were fine with it. So having said all those things, we did approve her application. That's all. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, that was the only speaker request, so I was in favor. I have nothing that says anyone is in opposition, and I don't see anybody on the Zoom meeting today that is um, going to speak in opposition. So, with that said, uh, we will close this part of the meeting uh, to <coughs> we'll open it up for board discussion and motion. Madam Chairman, I move we approve variance B20-003 as it meets the criteria for variance as required by section 90403 of the Putnam County Land Development Code with the conditions that were recommended by staff and authorize the chair to sign the final order. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve variance 20-003. Is there any further discussion? If not, I will need to do a roll call to get your vote. Earl Ballinger? Yes. Mark Fisher? Yes. Mayor, Mary's absent, Les is absent. Joe Theobald? Yes. Ron West? Yes. And Linda, I vote yes. Okay. So um, motion carries. It is 5 0. If there's any other information needed. Do you have, Ms. Weeks, you do have a 30 day appeal process just in case any, anything happens. So if there's any issues, uh, please stay in contact with staff and good luck in your endeavor. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. The next, uh, there's no new business, old business. So the next is the approval of the minutes for April 15th, 2020. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Will they be approved as read? Second. Need a second, second. All, right. all right. Mark. Second. The only, okay. The only thing that I see, and I don't, it's not going to make a big difference, but I noticed on page 10 and 11, Miss Mosley's name was misspelled. <laughs> so uh, just to point that out, uh, just to make sure that we're all reading the minutes. Anyway, um, well, I'm going to take a. Um, voice uh, approval. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, the minutes, the motion passes for approval of the minutes April 15th, 2020. Uh, well, it's been nice seeing everybody. Um, don't know when we'll ever meet in person again, but. <laughs> you can come visit me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are we gonna do in the boardroom mini meeting? <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything, anybody else have any concerns or questions? Anything to add? Uh, Mr. Theobald, when's school starting? Monday. <laughs> Monday. Are you uh, crunching the midnight oil to get things ready? <laughs> it's well, a disaster but, sometimes around here, but yeah, we're hanging tough, and it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. Good. Okay. With nothing else. Madam Chair, can I say something real quick, ma'am? Sure. I just have an announcement to make. Uh, we've made a promotion here in our office. Uh, Miss Nancy Brown will be moving up to permit technician. Um, she's accepted that uh, position and we are hiring or in the process of bringing on a new employee on Monday, uh, Mary McLaughlin. So um, Nancy will be doing training with her. And so you'll be seeing Mary and Nancy um, probably a few times until Mary gets a hang of it. But uh, Nancy has been, been elevated to another position. We're very happy about that. So um, congratulations are certainly in order for her. Yes, congratulations, Nancy. I know you're in the background someplace and I will miss um, my constant uh, calling you and asking you for help. So good luck, but uh, I'm sure your replacement will do a good job. And I'm sure you will do great in your new position. I can see her over there and I say, I will miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, we're also bringing back uh, John Sammons. He's oh, going okay. to be helping us. Uh, he'll be coming back on uh, August the 31st on a part-time basis, much like he was before. Okay. And we are actively searching for a senior planner and a planner two position. So we are trying to um, to increase staff here to, to help Mike and I with all the, the stuff that's been going on in, in um, our office. So just some good news on our behalf. Okay, well, thank you for the update, Mr. You're Jim. Welcome. Okay, is anybody else, any comments, questions? Have okay. a great day. 
I guess we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. Stay safe. Bye. Goodbye. All.